Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're working on 38 years of preaching this glorious gospel. Amen. It's uh, coming to the pulpit. It's not all about having something to preach. I got plenty of things I could preach. Plenty of things I brought to preach. That's not the problem. It's having the right mass message for the right time. Amen. And I feel, amen, like preaching this tonight more than anything else. And uh, I listened to Brother Cawley preach, and uh, he broke the ice. And uh, so we want to just get in here. We want to shoot for an altar. And uh, amen. Let's go here tonight to the book of First uh, Chronicles chapter 21. Very familiar story. And I uh, want to preach to us, amen, to challenge us in this day. And uh, pray that the Lord will stand by us again. It's so good to be here, and uh, we pray that we can uh, to be to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Verse number eighteen, First Chronicles twenty one. And then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. And thou shalt grant it me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. And so David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the name and called upon the Lord. And he answered. That's what her sister was singing, getting happy about. Called on him and he answered. And David here saying, I called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of the burnt offering. The Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheath thereof. Praise God. One more time, can you stretch your hands this way? Ask God to touch us here tonight. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus tonight. I pray, Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would be upon us. I pray, Lord, that you would lay your hand upon me. I pray, God, that the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the unction, the anointing of the Holy Ghost would rest upon me. For we know, Lord, it is the Spirit that giveth life. The letter killeth. But I pray let us preach this book that is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Let us wield it, Lord, and let the Spirit take control. And I pray that you would challenge every man, woman, boy and girl under the sound of my voice. And we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. I'd like to preach to you if the Lord would help me tonight. I'd like to preach about a full-priced religion. Amen. A full-priced religion. I want to tell you, most things I don't want to pay full price. I don't know the last time I ever, I don't guess I've ever paid full price for a suit. I've always went to the, to the bargain rack, to the discount rack. Never, never have I went into a car dealership and looked at the tag and said, hey, hey amen, just give it to me full price. Amen. Maybe if I had money, it would be different. But, you know, I've never done that. 
And, uh, but, when, but when it comes to religion, when it comes to the church, when it comes to Christianity, I think that everybody under the sound of my voice tonight, that, that you ought to be willing to give him everything. Two times in my text here tonight, if you notice and you're a Bible reader, David emphatically told Ornan, he meant, I want to buy it at the full price. I don't want a discount. I don't want to cut corners. I don't want to bargain hunt. Ornan, I'm here to buy this property and I want to buy it from you at full price. Are you hearing me here tonight? Lord, I pray. Lord, touch us tonight. It was Adam Clark, the great commentator, that said this. He said, he who has a religion that cost him nothing has a religion that is worth nothing. Let that sink in tonight. He who has a religion that cost him nothing has a religion that is worth nothing. William Gurnell, the great Puritan, who wrote the book, The Christian in the Complete Armor. It was the book that Leonard Ravenhill had put in David Wilkerson's hand that, that changed the course of David Wilkerson's ministry. He was just getting ready to go after the lights and the stage, but, but uh, Leonard Ravenhill slipped him. This 600-page book by a Puritan that said, David, read this book. David said when he uh, David Wilkerson said that when he come into the to the bus he threw the butt, the book on the bed it said who's got time to read a 600 page book by a puritan but but as, as he went back in he felt like the Spirit of the Lord nudged him. And, and as the Spirit nudged David Wilkerson, he went back in and he, and he picked up that, that, that book. And he said, I read about 13 pages of that book by William Gurnell. And I was on my face in tears, weeping before God. And it changed his, his course. It's a great book. Uh, they revised it there at Times Square Church and put it in more easy to read English but it is a powerful book I have read it but William Gurnell that great Puritan said this in that book he said he who sells the cheapest will have the most customers but in the end truth with self-denial is a better bargain than air with all of its flesh pleasing ways David would not take that property unless Ornan let him buy it at full price it was going to be the place where the temple brother Eddie one day that you made reference to was going to be built it was also said that upon these hills it was where Abraham had come to Mount Moriah with Isaac and built an altar and Isaac was laid on that altar are you hearing me Amen, brother when I was reading and studying this it seemed that the spirit of the Lord amen it nudged my heart it said the reason why David was emphatic to pay full price for this piece of real estate was because God would never let his house be built where his presence would dwell on a spot that was bought at a discount or at a bargain. Somebody help me preach. I want to tell you, friend, true religion, it cost you. It cost Moses the treasure, treasure, uh, treasures in Egypt. It cost John the Baptist his head. It cost the 
three Hebrew boys an afternoon in a fiery furnace. It cost Daniel, amen, a night in the lion's den. And I want to tell you in this ungodly society in which we live, this darkening, deepening, amen, devilish, demonic, diabolical culture in which we live. I'm telling you, those that are going to live for God with everything they have, it may get to the place that it cost us something. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. amen? Listen, amen, when we read the narrative of the text, you know the story. David wanted to number Israel. And I want to tell you any time a man gets interested in numbers, he bet he can bring a plague. He can bring trouble. David was interested in numbering his army. He was wondering how big his army was. And God was insulted that David was trying to rob glory from him. You know the story. A plague broke out. Over 70,000 men were dead. And the prophet Gad, he come to David. And he said, David, he rebuked him. And said, God wants to give you three choices. You know the story. David took the final choice. He said, I'd rather fall into the hands of God than into the hands of man. He said, because God is more merciful than man. How many can say that? He said, if I'm going to fall in anybody's hands, I want to fall into the hands of God. But I want to tell you tonight, that plague was deadly. That plague was dastardly. That plague, amen, was, amen, was devastating. But I'm telling you, we are in the midst of a plague in America. The, the plague of sin. The plague of per per perversion. The plague of the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Brother, amen, our churches are in, there are churches that are plagued. There are individuals that are suffering the plague. Amen, there's denominations and movements, amen, that are suffering the plague of sin. But I want to tell you, if we're going to stop the plague tonight, it's not going to be just good singing. It's not going to be just good preaching. Amen. I know you'll catch up with me here in a moment, I hope. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if we're going to have revival, it's going to be when God's people realize we can't have revival without a cost. And it's time to build an altar. Whatever happened to the altar? Whatever happened to the slaughter place? Whatever happened to the place that people present their bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God whatever happened to it oh I want to tell you tonight the altar is the plague stopper oh hallelujah I thank God for the altar I got saved at an altar amen I was married at an altar I was ordained to preach at an altar I was filled with the Holy Ghost at the altar. I was sanctified at the altar. I felt the fire of God. Amen. At the altar. Come on now. I want to tell you if we could get the altars built in the church again, we would stop the plague. Because you know when you build an altar and you present your body a holy sacrifice, what happens? The fire falls. Amen, brother. I'm glad to be Pentecostal, but I don't want to be Pentecost without a cost. Amen. Come on now. I want the fire of heaven. I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want the anointing. And hear me tonight. The devil hates the altar. He hates altar calls. He hates altar services. And he will do his dead level best tonight to distract you. Amen. From what I'm trying to preach to you. Because he knows if we can get to the
the altar. The fire is going to fall. He didn't come on somebody. Help me preach. Oh, I need to preach to you. He knows that the sacrifice of praise will bring down the presence of God. He meant it's at the altar where people find forgiveness. It's at the altar where old accounts are settled. It's at the altar where mercy is granted. There in the Old Testament, that altar represented what would be the cross. That God said, don't put it in a grove. Don't put it under trees. He meant, come on, keep it out in the open. Somebody help me preach here. He meant, listen to me. He meant, that's why when Gideon went and tore down the altar of Zerubbabel, he meant, come on now, he did it at night. He meant, he's a little, you know, timid, but he did it. Hallelujah. He meant, and God said, when you tear down Baal's altar, I want you to build my altar, and I want you to build it on the top of the rock where everybody can see it because I want them to see that the God of heaven still answers by fire. But I want to tell you we can have a revival around here. We just got to build an altar and believe that God is going to send the fire. Woo. And I know, amen, you know, when Noah was building altars. He was building arcs and saving his boys. But when he got out of that ark, didn't think it was necessary to build an altar, and he planted vineyards, he fell into vice, and he cursed his boys. Oh, I wish somebody helped me preach here. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, Daddy. Hey Amen. If you're not building that altar in your home, hey Amen. You could be cursing your family. Are you hearing me? If we've ever needed dads to take the role and be the leader, he made it to man up and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we are going to build an altar. I wish somebody would help me preach here. He meant tonight, come on now. He meant when, when God got ready for Jacob, he said, I want you to get back to Bethel and I want you to build an altar and I want you to sanctify yourself. I know, I know, amen, that we are living in an hour, even among Pentecost, that the altar call and the altar service is not popular. And I know there's been a paradigm shift toward counseling in the last couple of decades. And what the apostles used to cast out, amen, we're trying to counsel it out. Amen, and I'm not against counseling. I'm not saying there's not a place for Christian counsel. But I want to tell you, in my time of counseling, Brother Sullivan, I can bring them so far. Amen. Come on now. I can give them all the advice, all the scripture, lay the doctrine out for them. Amen. But listen to me. Amen. That's as far as I can get them. They don't have to take my advice. But I want to tell you the counsel that I want to give Bible Way Assembly tonight. Amen. Is let's build an altar. Altar. Amen. Let's build an altar and have revival where the fire of God will fall and our children will get baptized with the Holy Ghost and refilled with the Holy Ghost where we'll shout and sing and run. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Pentecostal modernists calls weakness, it calls it weakness. What God calls wickedness. They recommend culture instead of Calvary. And polish and psychology and pep instead of pardon and power. They'd rather give you activities instead of an altar. I know. I'm going old fashioned on you tonight. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. I guess I'm stuck in the 80s. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, when I got saved in the 80s, it was all about the altar. Amen. Are you hearing me? And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not, you know, you don't have altars here, but I know you have altar services and these work as altars. So I'm not, you know, up here 
saying, bless God. There is. I'm, not that, I'm not that. I'm not that crazy. Okay? I know you can make an altar anywhere. I make an altar in my living room every morning. Hey, man, at a couch. Are you hearing me? So, so I just wanted to make sure that, by the way, didn't think I was coming in here romping and stomping. Hallelujah, I've been here before. And I know that you have altar services. But what I'm trying to tell you, amen, is we're wanting Pentecost. Amen, we are wanting a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen, but so many in this hour, they're, they're, they're settling for a goose bump. They're settling for a pep rally. Amen, they're, they're, they're settling for a hype display. Amen. People want to go around Calvary. They want to go around the cross. They want to go around sanctification. They want to go around the doctrine of holiness. But there is no bypass. Paul said in Hebrews 13, we have an altar. And a few place verses later, amen, they're entering into the city. You know how you're going to make the city? You know how you're going to sweep through the gates? You got to build an altar. You got to present your body a living sacrifice and you gotta offer something that's gonna cost you something listen when David got to Ornans he didn't negotiate he didn't want a discount David was saying it's all or nothing Go with me tonight, it's quiet. I know that my eyebrows get arched and I look meaner than what I am when I'm getting intense. But I am not angry tonight. Amen. I'm just preaching. When I get to preaching, I can't help how my eyebrows brows look. My girls always have always dad, you gotta watch your eyebrows, huh? And I'll just say, God, why did you create me with these eyebrows? <laughs> I got to change the way I look. Huh? Hallelujah. I was going to let them get bushy and arch all they want to. I sure ain't going to start plucking them. Uh, oh, God. Have mercy. I can get off on that right now. I, I better not go right there. Are you hearing me now? I'm, I'm telling you, there was no discount. David didn't go for a discount. He wasn't coming for a bargain. Hey Amen. I don't want to throw Ornan completely under the bus tonight. Because I may preach him in a little bit of a, you know, a, a different angle. Amen. Because Ornan, when Ornan said, I'll give you the threshing floor and I'll give you everything you got. Ornan was probably tired of the plague. It was saying, hey, just like David. Amen. I'm tired of this plague. I give it all. If it has stopped the plague, David, you can have it. Amen. But David knew that he could not, Pastor Sullivan, he could not take. Amen. What Ornan it was trying to give him because if Ornan's author had been accepted it would have been Ornan's sacrifice and not David's and David knew if I'm going to sacrifice I brought this plague on it's going to have to cost me something but I'm afraid there's too many like Judas is scaring in the church tonight he met Judas when he betrayed the Lord he said what will ye give me? Amen. Amen. What is in it for me? That we've got a church world tonight. It's all about taking. What ministry do you have for me? Amen. What's in it for me? Amen. What's in it for my family? Amen. Me, me, me. We've got all kinds of getters. But I'd like to get somebody tonight that'll say I'm going to build an altar. That it'll cost me something. But I'm going to give God all my heart I'm going to give God all my mind I'm going to give God all my soul we live in the midst of a generation that we shirk and we shrug our shoulders at anything that has sacrifice attached to it. We have got a generation of young folks 
that think they can skirt through the gates and not have to pay anything. Enjoy entertainment. Enjoy pleasure. And still have the blessings that them old talk. When I got saved in 1985, I wasn't a choir boy. I had backslid. And I, I was involved in things I shouldn't have been involved in, Brother Eddie. And I'm going to try to keep it discreet. Hey, man, I was... I, I don't know how much of my testimony I told her, but hey amen. I, I went out and sinned, and the devil liked to took me out. Yeah. Yeah. I had a church, hey amen, that, that had some great people in it. But I'll tell you who stood out to me the most was those little 75 and 80 year old mothers of Israel. They'd gather early. You could hear them moan and groan. When you come in the church house, they were there and they were praising, praying and asking God to send revival and asking the anointing to break chains. Somebody help me preach here. Hey, Amen. Sister Sarah Maples, when I, when I, when I, did, nobody would have ever thought I'd have been a preacher. She walked up to me. She said, son, I was praying today and the Lord Lord told me that you're going to be a preacher. I thought, dear Lord, amen, I doubt it. Amen, she said, you wait and see. Amen, you know what? It come to pass quicker than I thought. Amen, within a year, I was on my way to Bible school. Amen, accepted the call to preach. Amen, they come to her door, I don't know how many times. The neighbors would call the cops two, three o'clock in the morning. Sister Maples, amen, in her back room building an altar the fire of the Holy Ghost falling her speaking with other tongues they knock on the door she'd come to the door they say Miss Maple is everything alright and she'd say oh yes I'm just a praying I'm just a praying I want to tell you friend amen there are people with addictions and problems and trouble ain't that good singing good preaching Good programs ain't going to get it done. We've got to have a church again that'll build an altar and not afraid to pay the full price. Or then, I don't want a discount. I don't want a bargain. I want to pay the full price. And it troubles me. It bothers me. And we have so many today that shirk and shrug their soul shoulders at the word sacrifice. We have made the cross a place of sacrilege almost because the modern day American church has made the cross and linked it to worldliness and weakness. Are you hearing me? But the true cross has always been linked to suffering, surrender, and sacrifice. Oh, somebody help me preach. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I wonder sometimes if we haven't become the cheapest generation that has ever entered into Pentecost. I know y'all listening to me. Amen. I, I want you to hear me. Amen. I want I, I want to preach to you, and then I want us to build an altar. Amen. Tonight and the rest of the week. I don't care if I preach the rest of the week. I'm telling you, but God wants to give Bible way a revival. And the way you're going to have revival is you're going to build altars. And you're going to say, Lord, it's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm in need of prayer. Amen. I can't make it on mama's coattail. I can't make it on daddy's coattail. Amen. Come on, somebody. If I'm going to make it, I've got to get an experience for myself. Are you hearing me? The plan of redemption was not cheap.
sheep. Amen. Heaven gave God sent heaven's best. That Jesus gave it all for you and I. Somebody help me here tonight. Woo. Oh, glory to God. Listen to me. I, I, I got to hurry. This wasn't an incident, an uh, isolated incident with David. Giving it all. It was his pattern. It was his blueprint. They say that the ark was 12 or 15 miles from Obed-Edom's house to get to Zion. It was approximately 30,000 paces from Obed-Edom's house to where the ark needed to be. David, every six paces, stopped, built an altar. Six more paces, stop, build an altar. He built, he built 5,000 altars and offered over 5,000 thousand bullets when he was breaking the presence of the Lord in the ark back to Jerusalem oh God somebody help me preach he knew what it was to give everything I know Ornan may have meant well but Ornan's offer was the spirit of convenience and that's the spirit that is in the church today it's the sin of Jeroboam it's innovation and convenience Hey, David, 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 why don't you let me let you cut some corners? There's no need for all this sacrifice stuff. Don't burden yourself. Hey, Amen. It doesn't take all of that, David. It's not necessary. Hey, Amen. Come on, let me give it to you, David. David said, Hey, hey Amen. No, no, no. If I'm going to build an altar, I got to build it. It's got to cost me something. Listen to me. You can't look at my and dad you can't look at grandpa and grandma and ride on that if we're going to have revival we've got to build an altar we've got to pay a price I know preaching like this oh, hallelujah I preached a couple Sundays ago somewhere in the United States of America Preach a, a biblical, solid, sound doctrine message. Amen. But it was, sadly, sometimes it's too heavy for people. Yeah. Too salty. Yeah. When you're talking about sacrifice, yeah. and surrender, yeah. and building altars. Yeah. What, me? Oh, no. I want Holy Ghost Church, but let Mama pray it down. Yeah. I want Holy Ghost Church, but let. Brother Sullivan, pay, pray it down. I want Holy Ghost Churro. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I want the plague stopped. I want the fire to fall. I don't want people to go to hell. Amen. But I want to have church. Brother Boyd, I sure would like to have revival before you leave Friday. Amen. But let somebody else pay the price. Let somebody else build the altar. Let's oh, Come on. Listen to me. I'm looking at everybody in the room tonight. Amen. God wants everybody in this room to build an altar. And he wants you to put a sacrifice on that altar altar that is going to cost you something. I wish you'd help me preach. Amen. Listen to me. Amen. If Brother Eddie's call and Brother Eddie's commitment and Brother Eddie's sound doctrine and his life and his example and his preaching doesn't become your cause, a plague is going to break out. But I can tell you, amen, I know Brother Eddie. Amen. He believes in building altars. He believes in a sacrifice. Come on. Come on. Uh, well, listen. Every morning when I get up, just about every morning, okay? I shouldn't say every morning. That's a big statement. But more often than not, when I go to my place of prayer, I enter to his gates with thanksgiving Amen. and into his courts with praise. I try to wipe the sleep out of my eyes and intensify 
for the ready on him. And it won't be long until in my mind I travel over to the tabernacle. After I've entered into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts of praise. You know what the first piece of furniture was in the tabernacle? The brazen altar. The biggest piece of furniture in the tabernacle it speaks of Christ. And I will bow there in prayer. And I've been preaching going on 38 years, Brother David. But I'll bow there in prayer. And I will say, Lord, I want to present my body a living sacrifice unto you, which is my reasonable service. It's the least I can do. I can't bank on my dad. My dad's read his Bible through 50 something times. He, he's had a prayer life ever since I can remember an hour. He met two, three hours a day, whatever. He's always read his Bible and I can't get to heaven. On my daddy's experience, he's probably influenced me more than anybody in my life. And I know a lot of preachers and I've been under a lot of ministries. But my dad taught me one thing in the Boyd home in Northern California. That altar building was important. Amen. And putting yourself on it and giving him everything. And go, oh, hallelujah. My God, I feel the Lord here tonight. I got to quit. It's at the altar that the plague is going to be stopped. It's at the altar where prayers are going to be answered. It's at the altar where hearts are going to be mended. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want absolute surrender anymore. We've replaced absolute surrender with conditional holiness and conditional submission to his will. Why? Because we don't want God to control us. We want to be able to do our own thing. So we pick and we choose what we can and what we cannot do. And it becomes convenience when God's saying, I want my children to build an altar. I want all their heart. And I want all their mind. And I want all their soul. Oh, glory to God. Listen. Shave you thinking of a song. I know praise and worship is powerful, but it won't replace the altar. I know preaching is great, but it won't replace the altar. We have took the ark with God's presence. We put it on wheels. We've took the blood out of the sacrifice. We've took work out of worship. To a church tonight it's not building altars and the fire falls but a majority of your churches across the land tonight on Wednesday night it was nothing more than a performance and entertainment and a stage and production no talk about sacrifice no talk about the cross no talk about surrender. No talk about it at all. Let's just tell them what they want to hear. Let's make it convenient for them. Oh God, would you help us tonight? Amen. Listen to me. That spirit of Ornan is trying to rewrite the Bible. It's trying to streamline the gospel. It's trying to remodel heaven and redefine holiness and explain away the devil and camouflage sin and air condition hell. Amen. But Ornan has never produced a revival, never saved a soul, never convicted a sinner. But with and God's people that are called by his name we're building up would you lift your hands in this building say Lord I'm ready to build an altar wow. 
We got to have the power of God. If we're going to train James trochees into disciples, if we're going to loose harlots from the shackles of lust. We can't inform without force, religion without redemption. He meant that defies the book, denies the blood, derides the second coming. He meant revival's not going to roll in this church on a cart. He meant, come on, it's not going to come if we just play it fast and we work it up and we pump it up with hype. He meant hype. If we have revival, it's going to ride on the shoulders. He meant of those that have paid the price. It's going to come on the shoulders and on the backs of altar builders. Is there an altar builder in the house? Come on, Sister Boyd. Oh, oh God, have your way on. Lift your hands toward heaven. That's the mind of the spirit right now. Would you stand? Listen. Discounted devotion won't do it. How much longer can we survive as a Pentecostal movement 
surviving, living in the smoke of someone else's sacrifice. How long? I mentioned David building those 5,000 altars. I was telling a preacher, my friend, about the when I was studying this out. And he said, my God. He said, my God, Rev. He said, David left his children a trail of altars. I pray that when they turn my feet upward, there's not a lot of this world's goods be able to get my girls but I hope they can look back on my life they can say daddy mama that's just a trail of altars how about you dad how about you mom how about you grandma we can make a trail and I'm going to tell you tonight I don't know how the altar service is going to go. I felt good preaching. Times I felt, you know. But right now, brother, pastor, maybe I need to give it to you. You know what to do with it better. But I feel like this will be a new beginning for Bible Way. If you'll take what I'm saying serious, say I'm going to be an altar builder. But not only am I going to be an altar builder, but I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice. And I'm going to get on the altar. And I'm going to give God my everything. And I'm going to build altars so my kids will have a trail of altars. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, man, I feel the Lord here today. I feel the Lord here today. I wonder, with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, pastor can look around, nobody else. I'm not even going to look around. But I wonder, is there an altar builder in the house? Is there somebody who's wanting to say, we got to have revival this week? And this preacher's giving us a recipe, we got to build an altar. Even is there an altar builder in the house? Is there a dad that says, I'm going to start building altars? Or I'm going to keep building altars? Amen, that you'll make your way. Come on now. Hallelujah. You may want to come as family units tonight. I don't know. But I pray. Do we have an altar builder? Is there someone? You'll come to the front here tonight. Amen, you'll kneel down. You'll build an altar. You'll present your body a living sacrifice. You'll say, God, I need more than just an entertaining religion I need more than just a feel good experience give me an experience of suffering an experience of surrender help me to be an altar builder help me to die to my flesh every day die to my own self every day mortify the deeds that are in the body amen okay amen these altars are filled up let's take a little time tonight to pray and build some altars I pray I didn't fumble the ball. I didn't know how to go with it.